warehouse management. So what I'll do as usual is we'll go through the lectures and then uh, we'll do some review questions and so on to finish the day off. I posted the lecture. It's under invent. No? Okay. If I didn't, I'll do that right away. Keep forgetting. It's not there? No, okay. Okay. Okay, stay now. Okay, um, so I posted the lecture just now. So we'll talk about inventory and warehouse management and then do some review questions as I said earlier. So in inventory and warehouse management, of course, we are dealing with uh, two aspects. One is keeping track of how much of materials we have and in which storage location and in what status they are. So that's one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is the actual warehouse management part of it, which is physically exactly in which location they are, which shelf, which aisle, those kinds of things. Okay, So there are two things, uh, two aspects involved here. Now. The two are actually different modules within SAP and it's possible in SAP for you to not have warehouse management active but you can still do inventory management because you're only keeping track of the quantities, right? So warehouse management enables you to do the physical logistics as well. There are two different modules and then we'll see how the two modules are actually linked together. The linkage is pretty clean, comes from just one single setting, we'll see that. Okay, so uh, in inventory management, one of the big things we are concerned about is goods movements, movement of goods, which is goods issues, goods receipts, and transfers, right? So that's what we are concerned with. So goods receipts may happen in one or two ways. We place an order with a vendor and the vendor supplies and goods receipts might be happening, incoming goods, or we produce something and as a result of production, goods may be coming into the warehouse. Okay, so those are the two reasons. Of course, there are other reasons why goods might be coming into the company. For example, a customer might return a product. So that's also possible as a thing, but we're not considering that, which is the reverse logistics. We're not considering that here. Uh, similarly, uh, as we've already discussed, the goods which are received may go into one of the three categories, unrestricted, blocked, or uh, in quality inspection. And then, of course, there is possible movement between plant to plant, which is also a goods movement. Of course, there is also movement within a plant, which is not clearly shown here, but that's also possible. And then, of course, there is outbound movement of goods from within our company, from or within the plant, which could be uh, issuing of goods for production, raw materials for production, and of course, sending shipments to customers, shipments of finished goods to customers. Okay. So these are all goods movements that we are interested in, in tracking and the procedures that SAP supports is what we will be looking at for these. Okay, So goods receipt from vendors of production and goods issues to customers or uh, uh, to production. Okay. This we have already spoken about stock transfer versus transfer posting. So stock transfer is when we actually make a physical movement of stock from place to place. So things like storage location 1 to storage location 2, 
plant 1 to plant 2 or storage location in plant 1 to storage location in plant 2 or storage location in a company 1 to storage location in company 2. Right? So you are actually moving the goods physically from one storage location to another storage location either within the same plant or within the same company or within the same client even. Okay, So that is all stock transfer. And the other aspect we have already seen is also goods movement but it is not a physical movement and it is called as a transfer posting and we have already seen some examples. Uh, two, one example is shown here which is stock and quality inspection converted to stock for unrestricted use. Okay, it is still in the same storage location, it has not moved in terms of at least storage location wise but it is now in unrestricted use. Okay, so in terms of the system, it has to track it differently now. The system has to know that something has changed. Right? So that is what is a transfer posting. Okay. Um, so we are just looking at this in a slightly greater detail than we have looked at so far, but I think we have actually discussed all of these points already. So when you are looking at transfer postings, uh, it can happen because of change to stock type, material number or batch number of the stock. Right. An additional physical movement is possible along with transfer posting. Uh, the three main kinds of transfer posting are stock to stock transfer posting which is the main example that we gave stock and quality inspection to block stock or you know stock and quality inspection to unrestricted use stock or stock and unrestricted use to quality inspection any of those movements. Okay, so that is called stock to stock movement. Material to material is when the material number changes but that's about that's all that changes. The stock doesn't actually move from place to place, and we saw some examples of this earlier, which is when uh, you change the material number itself for whatever reason. The company discontinues the old one and uses a new one, or we just repackage the material, so it's really the same material instead of being individual. It's now in packs of two. That's a possibility. So those are all things where, for whatever reason, there's a uh, a change in the material number and but it is still in the same storage location. So effectively you have the same quantity but you know it is just a change in terms of how the system use the item. Uh, and then of course there is consignment to warehouse which is also an important thing that is that customer uh, sorry the vendor has left some stock with us as consignment stock. It is in a storage location obviously we are managing it on behalf of the vendor for our convenience, but at some point you decide, okay, I'm going to use 100 units of this. Okay, so it's still in the warehouse, but it's in the same place, storage location, but now it's usable by us. Okay, so the contract might be, you know, I'm leaving it, use it whenever you use it, let me know, we'll bill you. Okay, so because it's already in our premises so clearly it's intended for use okay so that is consignment to warehouse uh, stock transfers can happen between two storage locations in one company code or between storage location uh, in one plant or between storage locations which cut across plants or it could go from two storage locations that span company codes okay so those are all the uh, points with some examples Okay, so those are all the various movements, goods movements that we are interested in tracking. Okay, so whenever you are doing stock transfers, there is a general idea that you could choose to do it as a one step transaction or as a two step transaction. Okay, if you do it as a one step transaction, that is what this is. It's, you know the removal and the placement in storage is from the point of view of the system is entered as one single transaction right so you you will have one material document that's created with two items one representing removal from one place and the other representing the uh, deposit into the second place right removal from origin deposit into the destination entered as one single document okay so that is one step stock transfer the other one is a two step stock transfer where the removal is entered as one transaction and then 
subsequent deposit is entered as another transaction. Two separate transactions. So you'll have two separate material documents created. Um, this is all happening uh, if it happens, you know, accounting document if there is any valuation change. So that just depends on the context there. Okay. Now the main difference between these two is in this in the two-step process, what happens is as soon as the stock is removed from the origin storage location, it is considered as in transit so far as the receiving destination is concerned. Right? So if you do the stock overview, you'll see that this stock is shown in the destination, but it's shown as in transit. Right? So it won't be considered usable material at that point. Okay? Uh, so because of this, it is possible for us to track stock that is in transit. So that is why you might use the two-step transaction. Uh, the one way I would look at it is, if your storage locations are really close by and the movement doesn't take a big deal of time, you know, maybe it takes five minutes to move it from one place to another, then you may not do the two-step because the stock is not going to be in transit for a very long time. Right? On the other hand, if the storage locations are pretty quite far apart and it can take, a, you know, several hours or a couple of days to move the thing from one place to another, then it's going to be in transit for an extended period of time. It might be a good idea for us to track it. Okay. So clearly, the one-step alternative is nice because it's simple and you finish off everything in one single transaction. So that's the convenience of it. But the downside is you cannot stop, uh, track the stock which is in transit. You might not need to in certain cases. In which case, this is ideal, but the two-step transaction enables monitoring. And as I already said, on removal, it is treated as in-transit stock for the receiving point. Okay, so it gives you a slightly more accurate picture of what is going on. Okay, now sometimes if you're moving from, let's say, plant to plant, right here, we are not specifically saying uh, whether it's storage location to low storage location or plant to plant or company code to company code. But suppose you're doing movement from plant to plant and the person initiating the transfer doesn't have authorization in both the plants, right? So then that person won't be able to do a one-step transfer, right? Because they don't have authorization to move goods into the other plant. So in that case, this might have to be done as a two-step process. That's another reason why you might have to do two-step because of authorization restrictions. Okay. Another restriction which we'll see later on is that there should not be any stock of a particular item in transit if you want to perform physical inventory procedures. We'll talk about what they are and why they are used later on. Right? But there is a connection here. So if, a, if you're trying to do stock management for some item and some of that item is actually in transit, then uh, the system will prevent you from initiating a physical inventory for for that item and we'll see shortly what physical inventory is okay so first of all let's take a look at uh, storage location to storage location transfer stock transfer in one step okay so you've got storage location one and two both in one plant okay so because they are in one plant 99% uh, of the time there is no valuation aspect to it okay uh, so here, you can move, as you can see from here, you can make all kinds of movements, right? So as you're moving from storage location 1 to 2, it might be going from unrestricted use stock to stock and quality inspection, okay? That's not shown here, but that is possible, okay? Or, uh, you know, any of these transitions is possible, okay? So that is the storage location to storage location uh, movement of stock. Now notice that uh, in all of these cases that we are seeing here, if it moves, let's say, from unrestricted, uh, you know, stock and quality inspection here to unrestricted there, right? Then it actually is two movements, right? There is one stock transfer and there is one stock transfer post office, right? So it can be combined. That's what they mean whenever they say this transfer posting can be combined with the stock transfer. This is what it, we are talking about. Right, you're moving it from place to place. At the same time, you're changing its uh, category. Okay, uh, so all movements are permitted, as we just saw. 
Uh, so this creates one material document with two items because we are talking about one step, right? So it's one material document with two items. First item for removal, second, first item for the first storage location, removal, and the second item for the second storage location, deposit. Okay, so no accounting document, right, unless there is something like a split valuation that occurs, okay. Now split valuation is, it's a rare occurrence, but sometimes companies may value the same material in two different ways. Okay, in other words, let's say you've got a material that you make, but you also buy that material from outside. And you might value these two things differently for whatever reason, right? Or sometimes you might classify material which you buy from outside into different grades and then you may value the different grades differently, okay? Even though it's the same material, okay? That's what is called split valuation, okay? It's got split valuation and under that situation, if for whatever reason, after you perform the movement, the valuation changes, okay, then you might have uh, an accounting document as well, okay. So even though it's just in one plant, most of the time there won't be any change in accounting, uh, there won't be any accounting document because there's no change in value unless there's some split valuation going on, okay. It's just a combination of stock transfer and transfer posting. That's all. There's no special term for that. It's just a combination. Okay. So the split valuation, I'm just mentioning it because it, they've got it in the notes. It's, uh, you know, most of the time we say there's no accounting implication if it moves from within a, you know, if there's a movement within a plant. Okay. So, but if there is split valuation, then there can be an accounting implication. Okay, so we just spoke about this point, about why there might be split valuation. Okay, so now we're looking at storage location to storage location movement, but this time we're looking at the two-step process, right? So in the two-step process, as we said, you move from uh, one storage location to the other storage location, but the removal is one step and the deposit is a second step, okay? Uh, so there's one restriction here that in this case, it has to move only from unrestricted to unrestricted. Okay, the two-step procedure for storage location to storage location transfer, it's still within one plant, but this requires that you, you move from unrestricted to unrestricted. Okay, there must be some underlying deep logic. I don't know about that logic. Okay, so that's a restriction, unrestricted to unrestricted. And again, like before, it's considered as being in transit. Yeah, question? So I, I think if it was restricted, you're not allowed to touch it. Only quality can move it. So then quality would have to put it unrestricted and then move it. Well, that's only if quality inspection is there. I mean, quality if it, system. If it's restricted, then there's a reason it's restricted. Like, that's the only reason you can't move it from storage location to storage location. No, restriction in the sense it's, uh, you know, it might be under quality inspection. It's okay, we'll take it there and inspect it in the other place. There shouldn't be, but there must be some other logic why they don't want us to, uh, they don't allow this. You can do a one-step transfer, of course. I think you can go in the wrong place. Anyway, that's just the fact for now. There's no, uh, no logic. Okay, so like before, it is in transit at the receiving location once it's removed from the origin. <clears throat> okay, and... It is not available as unrestricted use stock at the receiving location till you have actually moved it into place, right? Because it's considered as in transit at that point, okay? So that's an important thing. So this is considered as just stock in transit. So if you try to see the stock overview, it won't show you this as unrestricted use stock. So, yeah. They are the movement types. These are the movement types, yeah. SAP movement, just like 101 was we saw, these are just more movement types. Okay, so that's what we are seeing. It's 
stock in transfer and then it becomes unrestricted use stock afterwards okay and like we said before it creates two material documents not one okay so now we are looking at cross plant stock transfer